All right, I'm going to give you six steps to have a great relationship. Number one, trust. This might be difficult for most of you because most of you people are paranoid and crazy as fuck. But it's easy. Just trust your significant other. If they go outside to go buy a drink of soda from the fucking gas station, it doesn't mean they're going to go to the gas station and suck the clerk's dick. <laughs> That's terrible. You can trust these people, all right? Just because they might have had a past, they might have had a history, doesn't mean that every time they go out and do something, it doesn't mean that there's going to be some kind of dick in somebody's mouth. Bullshit. An easy way to tell when someone isn't trusting you is usually when you do something, at least within five minutes of you departing from your your home or your place of uh, from your significant other. From your, yeah, when you leave from your significant other, you will at least receive two to three text messages. Where are you going? Who are you with? What are you doing? Why are you there? Are you drinking? So you don't want to have, you don't want to be with someone who has a lot of trust issues. Uh, it's something that can be worked out. Eventually over time you can show them that you're not going to cheat on them or you can show them that it is okay for you to walk outside without a leash and collar and a GPS unit on your ankle. But it's not generally okay to get into a relationship with someone who already has severe trust issues. It's a very hard like hurdle to tackle and quite frankly, Frankly, if someone does have that severe trust issues, it's really not that worth it half the time. Number two, independence. Leave your significant other the fuck alone sometimes. There are days, there are hours, there are minutes, there are seconds, and there are just those times when they want to be left alone. They want to breathe. They want to look at a wall. They want to pick their nose. They want to shit. Something they want to do by themselves. Because people have this desire to do things by themselves. A big problem with this is people who don't have hobbies or something to do by themselves. So if you're someone who sits around all day get and a fucking hobby. get a fucking hobby, if you don't have anything to do, it's generally easy to get into something very cheap and very fun. Uh, I would, for instance, recommend watching YouTube videos. It's a pretty easy hobby because you just go around and peruse the internet. And you don't have to do much aside from click. It's completely free if you have an internet connection and you're watching this anyways. So why not keep perusing YouTube? There's your hobby. Uh, if not, you can record yourself doing stupid shit. You can watch TV. Something it doesn't. A hobby doesn't have to be something that you're in, that you do that you pay for. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be an activity or an art or anything like that. It just is something you do by yourself that you enjoy or can do with other people and has some kind of like output there's you gain something from it whether it's entertainment whether it's money whether it's uh, respect it doesn't matter have a fucking hobby do something with your goddamn life in the time that you're a fucking book do something with your time when the significant other is not available to hug and hump their leg number three it's compatibility it's very hard to get in a relationship and keep it going if none of you have a fucking desire to be with each other if you're sitting there every day looking at this significant other and going, at least you're fucking gorgeous because everything else about you sucks dick. That's not someone you should be with. Because, Dude. no. Am I dating you? <laughs> because, I'm when you frequently look, When you look at your significant other and frequently think, why am I dating you? Probably shouldn't be dating that person then. That's a very good point. So why? Another, another good thing is, you want to make sure that you kind of agree on certain key important facts stuff that you either agree not to bring up about or things you agree on that are heavy usually politics religion um things of that nature just beliefs um drugs any, anything that could hamper a relationship from the very get-go because it just drives you nuts when something happens or someone talks about something it's generally important to make sure that you talk to them about this before you do something that will ultimately piss them off. Number four, who wears the pants in your fucking relationship? Because let me tell you something, you can't put four four legs inside a, a pair of pants. It doesn't work. I've seen it. I've tried it. It doesn't work. What would you like fat pair of pants? It doesn't work. The best bet is to find somebody who has intelligence, emotional stability, and and, a, and the key importance is uh, manipulation. If they can do all three of these things, you could probably guess that they're wearing the pants. This is good, because there always should be someone in the relationship that is wearing the pants. You can have a relationship that is based on, you know, uh, equality or shit like that. 
those usually don't work out so well. There has to be someone that's leading it, because, to be honest, one of you are going to be fucking retarded. That's just how it works. That's just science. Generally, someone in the relationship is going to be the idiot that needs to be led. And if that's you, I'm sorry, but just hand over the pants to the person who can do the job the best. Number six is good sex. Make sure that they're fuckable. If you, honestly, it's there are some relationships, may, depending on your religion or depending on your sexual orientation, that sex isn't all that important, but it is. And this is because sex not only brings people together on an emotional level, but it's also a great stress reliever and a great workout. <laughs> and it's just generally fun. There's a lot of fun things you can do while having sex. So one of the important things is if you're not having fun while having sex with somebody, you probably shouldn't be in a relationship with them. Because it's a good sign that later down the road, you're going to run into a situation where even something as simple as wanting to make a child will be very difficult if you can't even get your rocks off because this person sucks at fucking having sex. And also that, you know, it's sex. It's everywhere. Just search, just search sex on YouTube. You'll find more hits in that than if you type in politics. Number seven, communication. Talk to your fucking significant other. Don't just be a fucking a blind, deaf, mute motherfucker and just sit there in a relationship doing nothing because you're generally going to look like an asshole. Communication is what defines a relationship. A communication will bring together people. It's same with the compatibility. It's same with uh, trusting. It's same with independence. All these things need to be done through communication. They need to be solidified through words and a great... Uh, Great dis discussion that everybody under yes, yes. No, great discussion that everybody can understand. If you cannot have a great, if you don't have great communication, it's pretty easy to practice. Try maybe going to a friend's house and calling that person on the phone and just having a decent conversation with somebody. Maybe just talk to them. Generally, if you're somehow dating these people, you had to have talked to them at some point. And so from that stem and see what did you do to communicate and get their interest. That's about all I have as far as helping you people try to have a good relationship. Uh, if all else fails and you're really fucked and there's nothing you can do to save the relationship you're in, it's always good to have an escape plan. Something generally just over the top. Something that will just, no matter what you do, will end the relationship immediately and you can start over all over again with a new person this can usually be murder it can usually be uh having sex with that significant other's close friend or relative mom. um your mom your mom can end a lot of stuff you'd be surprised uh and just generally anything anything that you think is over the top i'm sure you can search a lot more interesting ways to end a relationship. I might even do the thing on how to end relationships because that just sounds funny. But there, yeah, if all else fails, always have a backup plan. And, you know, again, it's a lot cheaper to buy bullets for a gun than it is to buy a bouquet of roses. Shoot that bitch. Really? 